Coming up on UIW TV, find out about the newest limited exhibit at the Whitty Museum, watch a renowned filmmaker share her experiences with Curious Cardinals, and stay tuned for the return of the UIW Wind Ensemble. All this and more next on UIW TV. Hello, and welcome back to UIW TV. I'm Gabrielle Yanez. And I'm Janelle De Jesus. We hope everyone had a safe spring break and happy St. Patrick's Day. That's right. I can see you're wearing your green. And I see you're not. I know, I forgot. But um, spring break was some much needed time off, and we're glad to be back to bring you all the latest news on campus as we head closer to the end of the spring 2022 semester. Let's begin. If you can believe it, the time has come once again to prepare for registration for the upcoming semester. Communication arts majors can attend advising day on April 1st from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in AD 265 to meet with their advisors and prepare to register for the fall 2022 semester. Students are asked to bring their completed advising day form with their proposed classes to discuss with their advisors. Pizza and coffee will be provided for attendees. Don't miss out. The UIW Rosenberg School of Optometry is making history this semester. They've come out with a groundbreaking new study on color deficiency. Imagine a world without color. It may be hard for you or I to think about, but for 8% of men and one in every 200 women, that's their reality. UIW's Rosenberg School of Optometry is on the cutting edge of researching this condition with their latest study led by Dr. So, Jeffrey Rabin. Um, normal color vision depends on um, three sensors in the back of the eye, retinal cones. The study focused on the use of enchroma color corrective lenses, building on previous work by Dr. John Werner and colleagues out of UC Davis. They discovered that color vision improved even after subjects stopped wearing the glasses. Dr. Rabin says the reason lies in the brain. There is compensation that occurs in, in color deficiency and with the aid of these lenses, what may be happening is that there are in fact connections that reawaken or, or are trained. It's pink, like this. Dr. Rabin and his team <laughs> wanted to expand on Dr. Werner's groundbreaking work by narrowing down the results. Instead of just doing red, green, kind of in general, we, uh, our tests are all cone specific. So we could target the defective cone. This more exact reading could allow doctors to better match the type of glasses a patient may need. This may even mean opening up job opportunities. Some occupations say, you know, you're color deficient, no. Well, um, that's changing. The world is changing. And um, if they can see well enough with these glasses, they may uh, be eligible for um, an occupation they're seeking. Oh my God. <laughs> While the study may already be published, optometrist and Ph.D. grad student Frances Silva didn't want to stop there. She extended the study for another six months. After two weeks, we have remarkable results. It's a long lasting beyond that. And I was able to see that the one, one month mark, three month mark and the six month mark, the brain wave showed that it stabilized by the six month mark. With the future of optometry in safe hands, I'm Joy Bergen with UIW TV. What incredible work that team is doing over there. I can't wait to see where they take this research further. UIW recently hosted the Texas Academic Decathlon for competing high schools across Texas. The winning teams from each division took home a total of $126,000 in scholarships and move on to national competition. The winning schools this year included Dulles High School, Highland Park High School, and San Antonio's very own Bandera High School. Event organizers look forward to next year when the decathlon will be returning to campus for the spring of 2023. Few experiences offer as many learning opportunities as spending time abroad. You will now see what it's like to be an international student at UIW. Studying abroad is a once in a lifetime experience for a college student. By studying abroad, students have the opportunity to study in a foreign nation and take in the allure and culture of a new land. 
Business and marketing major Daniel Garcia comes all the way from Madrid, Spain, and is spending the current semester at UAW. I actually wanted to study study in the U.S., so one of the options was UAW, and I actually like it because it was near Mexico. It was in San Antonio, and the weather in San Antonio is pretty great. After spending two and a half years at his local school in Madrid, Daniel can tell many differences when it comes to his career at either university. They're completely different. In Spain, he's more focused on studying accounting or studying like taxes and stuff to, to actually work in the business. And here in the U.S., he's more focused to build a business, to be the CEO of that business. After he decided to study at the University of Incarnate Word, Daniel also had to consider both keeping up with his schoolwork and administrating a business. Here at UAW, actually, I really like it because the, the schedule is really customized and, per, and personal. So I have a lot of time to manage the business and also enjoy things as soccer and, and sports. Besides from studies, Daniel also owns a digital marketing company and has managed to find a way through to keep his business going. So it's very easy to, to manage here the business and I'm also looking for new clients here. So it could be a great way with that time that UIW is giving me to have the chance to talk to clients here and to keep growing my business. Daniel's expectations are high, as he believes to have future plans coming back to the U.S. once he's done with his career. I will implement everything I learned on the business and marketing side of the, of the college uh, major to implement it in my business, and that's how I could like, start growing faster and move to San Antonio to, to open my office. If you want to learn more about the Student Exchange Program, contact Study Abroad and Exchange Coordinator at studyabroad at uawtx.edu. For UAW TV, I'm Mario Garcia. Definitely a must-do experience at some point in your life. Opportunities for professionals in our desired career field seemingly surround us here at UAW. That is especially important for the creative minds here on campus looking for a spark of inspiration. Reporter Alyssa Munoz got to sit down with a filmmaker who made a stop at UAW to offer her advice to students hoping to pursue a career in the film industry. On Friday, February 18th, UIW student filmmakers were given a special opportunity to speak with an award-winning filmmaker. This comes just in time as the students prepare to begin production on their upcoming short films. Rosana Diaz Costa is a writer, director, and film professor from Lima, Peru. She's received a number of awards and recognition for her work. In November 2021, Costa premiered her second feature film, Un Mundo para Julias, an adaptation of a famous novel by the same name. It has since been selected for several film festivals and premiered in theaters across the world. Costa, however, says she's faced many obstacles to get her film on the big screen. Well, the principal obstacle was money, of course, you know. It was very difficult to finance the movie because Peru is, doesn't have an industry of cinema, so I had to look for the money in not only Peru, but out from Peru. It's based on the book, right? During yeah, Friday's discussion, the student more filmmakers more. were able to ask questions and learn all about Costa's career in the industry. They also got the chance to present their ideas and receive feedback on their upcoming short film projects. Walking away with valuable advice, students hope to implement what they've learned into their own movie-making journeys. So I thought, I was like, oh, this would be a good opportunity to see how she really started, how she got to where she was, mm -hmm. and kind of how she's going to continue to grow. Saturday evening, community members gathered at UIW's Benick Concert Hall for a screening of Un Mundo para Julias, followed by a Q&A session. The event was sponsored by Casa de España en San Antonio and the UIW College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. Her visit to UIW has opened a window of opportunity and inspiration for the filmmakers of tomorrow. For UIW TV, I'm Alyssa Munoz. I'll make sure to put her film on my watch list. Thanks, Alyssa. I'm excited to see what becomes of the filmmakers on campus. They are a very creative group. Now it's time to hear from our viewers for our social media question of the week. We asked, who do you got winning it all in your March Madness bracket? We'll check in on those responses later in the show. For now, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break with entertainment news. We were at the stores the other day and we were walking around and um, we walked up to this one store that was like a plant store. Your birthday's coming up, so uh, I was thinking about looking for something for you. 
So I was walking around and um, I ended up seeing this one potted plant holder. I showed it to mom. She really likes it. She might steal it. But um, she said it would have been perfect for the plant that you had on the side table in your room. I really wish I could have given it to you. If that drunk driver made the right decision that night, my sister would still be with me. If you're drinking, designate a driver, call a rideshare service, or stay the night. Next time you're debating whether or not to get behind the wheel, think of Diana and her story. You are watching UIW TV, the ward on campus. Welcome back, Cardinals. I'm Andrea Oliva, your entertainment anchor, here to bring you the latest entertainment news from campus. Let's get started. The Whitty Museum is known for its special exhibits, and this one might interest you. The Secret World Inside You explores the evolving science within our own bodies. The exhibit offers a new perspective on bacteria, viruses, and other microbes that call our body home. We, we need to be educated um, on how to keep our bacteria healthy, which will keep us healthy, both physically and mentally. The exhibit is only available till April 3rd, so make sure to visit before then. You can get your tickets at wittymuseum.org. Cardinals, let's get crafty with a bit of an international flair. Recently, the Asian Culture Club held their arts and crafts social. Students learned more about and took part in Asian crafts such as origami, henna tattoos, and lantern making. Any exchange student that comes into UIW comes and joins the club and we are very welcoming so they find a home and a place at, uh, at uh, the Asian Culture Club. The club has been around since 2010. Much like Asia itself, the club's strength lies within a vast range of diversity. If you'd like to join the Asian Culture Club, you can contact Dr. Nath by email for more information. Hey Cardinals, if you are looking for fun events on campus, then the Campus Activity Board has you covered. I attempted to paint the Starry Night painting and I got my hand painted and I had a lot of fun. The Campus Activity Board kicked off the week before spring break with the Cab Fever event. Although it was rescheduled due to the cold weather, the weather on this day was perfect for the event. There were a lot of games, food, and fun. I have done all of the events. I've done Limbo, which I failed miserably at. I have done the bowling, the Jenga, uh, this Hungry Hungry Hippos, which is my favorite. I've played with several people. Raffle tickets were given out for a chance to win a record player and a couple of vinyls, too. Um, it's exciting. I mean, I've never won a raffle, so <laughs> I think it's exciting, yeah. If you want to know more about upcoming events like this, visit UIW Engage. For UIW TV, I'm Draven Rios. Congratulations on winning the raffle, Alexandra. The San Antonio River Walk hosted a jazz fest Saturday, February 26th and Sunday, February 27th. This was one of many events during San Antonio's Mardi Gras Festival Weekend. The Jazz Fest took place at the Arneson River Theater. The performance lineup featured local and international musicians. Smooth Jazz performers and St. Mary's University alumni Billy Ray Shepard led Saturday's lineup. 
I love San Antonio. You know, this is my home. So, you know, any chance I get to represent the city, I'll be a part of something positive in the city. I'm, I'm happy and honored to do so. Jazz Fest was a free event sponsored by Bud Light, Yelp, and other local businesses. The next big event that will be held at the Riverwalk is the St. Patrick's Day Festival from March 17th to March 20th. Go to sanantonioriverwalk.com slash events for more information. This spring semester brought back freezing air, but also some warm notes. The OIW's Bennett Concert Hall was filled with excitement as the students in the wind ensemble rehearsed. They were warming up for their first concert in front of a live audience in nearly two years. It's pretty exciting. This is our first concert that we're having the entire season. It's challenging music, so we've all been working really hard, but I think you'll see like in some of our recordings, it's the moments like this that really make it worth it, so we are all super stoked about it. Titled Fanfare and Dances, the pieces performed have musical flourishes played by different brass and woodwind instruments. One piece called Incantation and Dance is a great example of the concert's rhythmic dancing feel. Well, the first thing is when you're part of the wind ensemble class, it's part of our curriculum to perform concerts of the music that you've worked on. Uh, it's also a great chance for us to share our efforts with the greater community and our family and friends. Formed in 2009, the Wind Ensemble traditionally performs two annual concerts. The Wind Ensemble invites music students with a background in woodwind, brass, or percussion instruments to enroll in the curriculum and play alongside them. For UIW-TV, I'm Jared Luna. You can catch the Wind Ensemble again on April 24th in the Bennick Concert Hall. The charts haven't changed up much since we last caught you up to speed. So for today's Music in a Minute, let's take a look at some new announcements from the music industry. In some unexpected but exciting news, the family of late Tejano legend Selena Quintanilla Perez announced the upcoming release of a new album from the artist later this year. This news comes from almost three decades after the singer's death. The album was produced by Selena's brother, A.B. Quintanilla, who worked on her voice using the power of technology. There is currently no official release date. In other news, The Weeknd announced the first leg of dates for his upcoming tour with singer Doja Cat. Although there is no date for San Antonio, the tour titled After Hours Till Dawn will make a stop in Arlington, Texas. Tickets are on sale now. But if you're not looking to drive up to Arlington, Bad Bunny is set to make a stop at the Alamo Dome for his tour called The World's Hottest Tour. Tickets are also currently on sale. This has been Music in a Minute. That's all the entertainment news I have for you today. Sports news is coming right up after the break, so stick around. Until then, for UIW TV, I'm Andrea Oliva. Who are you? It doesn't matter who I am, at least not to you. Looks like you got more important things to worry about anyway. No, no, man. It was just one text, though. <laughs> that was enough to screw that guy over. But it's but it's fine though. I didn't I didn't even hit the guy. Oh, you thought you did, but uh, but you did. You see that that guy? He's 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 well, you know. No, no, this is wrong. I didn't mean to hit the guy at all. At all. Please, please, I'm, so, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean...
Glad to see you tuned in. I'm Maria Castillo for UIW TV Sports Anchor, here to bring you all the updates in UIW Sports. There's no better way to start our sports rundown today than by congratulating our women's basketball team who made a historic weekend. Angelo Mitchell has more on the story. As your UIW Cardinals bring home the first Southland Conference Championship in program history, winning four straight games in four straight days, not only did they win the championship by defeating Southeastern Louisiana in the final, they punched their first ever ticket to March Madness. You know, the word that's been tossed around a lot, Angelo, of late is surreal. It's almost surreal, the entire thing. I mean, if you go back to, I guess, starting with the Thursday game uh, against Nickel State, first, first time UIW women's basketball has ever won a game, you know, in the Southland Conference Tournament. So that alone already was, you know, pretty epic. As they prepare for their opponent in Howard University, Coach Dowell explained how important this is for the entire UIW family. Well, it's huge. I mean, on in several many levels. I mean, obviously the UIW has only been Division One since 2013. Uh, that's a major leap, you know, to to be able to pull that off. Um, obviously, it's big for you know not just our program, but the athletic department, the university in general. Um, you know, kind of put ourselves on the map. You know, to be honest with you. And uh, while UIW is making history, not only for itself, but for the NCAA as well. So this is actually the first ever, uh, you know, a game of the, the, you know, the, the first four, as it's called, you know, so that's, you know, first time in history as well. And there's, as we just kind of were talking, there's been a lot of first, you know, in the last week for UIW women's basketball, obviously. So hope we, you know, hopefully we can follow up with the first ever win in the NCAA tournament. I am Angelo Mitchell for UIW TV. Unfortunately, the Cardinals fell to Bison's 55-53 to in a hard-fought game that went down to the wire. However, fortunately, the Cardinals should be returning 70% of its team to give us another shot at the big dance. Our Cardinals sure know how to win. Last night, UIW Baseball played Columbia University at home after coming off a great win against the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. This Tuesday, women's tennis won against the University of Nebraska at Omaha with a final score of six matches to one. Softball fell short to the University of Texas at Arlington with a final score of 5-11 to after coming off two good wins against Abilene Christian. Despite the loss this week, UIW softball is seeing a lot of improvement this season. The Lady Cardinals filled some key positions this past season, bringing in multiple additions to the coaching staff that has proved to be a game changer. With the spring season underway, the team is ready to swing their way into the Southland Conference play. After last year's struggles, I feel like we're more prepared than we ever have been in the past. Our new coaching staff here at UIW has brought nothing but energy and passion to the game of softball. And I believe that all the small details we've worked on since the fall will show come conference. One thing is for certain, these players know how to win a game and they are very motivated and invested to bring in a new standard to UIW. With all this positive energy, we can expect great things, especially when a gameplay is on the line. Now with UIW fencing, we'll be sending two Cardinals to the NCAA National Collegiate Men's and Women's Fencing Championships. Julian Spear and Riley Ruda both qualified for nationals following their podium finishes in the NCAA Regionals and the Conference Championship this past weekend. The Cardinals will be traveling to the University of Notre Dame to compete in nationals from March 24th to the 27th. We wish them the best of luck. But fencing isn't the only UIW team competing in a national championship. Our artistic swimming team is set to compete at the U.S. Collegiate Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. One of the highlights of our Cardinals season includes the victory over national champions Stanford University and the Texas Women's University Invitational last month. The Cardinals now look to continue their success during nationals, which begin next Friday, March 25th, and end on Sunday, March 27th. It's that time, Cardinals. Let's see what's in store across our UIW teams this weekend. We are just a few minutes away from women's tennis taking on their home court to play against the Jersey University of Technology at 1 p.m. tomorrow. 
Men's tennis will take on the New Jersey Institute of Technology at 11 a.m. and ba baseball will travel to Austin to face off against the University of Texas at 6.30 p.m. as part of their three-game series. There will be plenty of Cardinal action this weekend you won't want to miss. Well, that officially does it for our sports block today. It has been a blast. Until next time, for UIW-TV, I'm Maria Castillo. Don't go anywhere just yet. I think it's time to check the responses to this week's social media question. Right, Gabby? That's right, Maria. This week we asked, who do you got winning it all in your March Madness bracket? Let's see what our viewers had to say. Mary Valera says, the Yukon Huskies. Angelo Mitchell says, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I'm right there with you, Angelo. But thank you so much for those responses. Be sure to check out our next social media question on the Comart social media pages. And that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back again on March 31st. Until then, I'm Janelle De Jesus. And I'm Gabrielle Yanez. This has been UIW-TV, the word on campus.